by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله Viewers of Madhani Channel, welcome to Arise and Shine the time where we rise and shine, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to begin with a blessing of reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a great way to rise and shine by reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If only we get into the habit that when we open our eyes in the morning as we're lying in our bed, the first thing that comes from our mouth is the words of Durud Park. The Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has said that if someone wishes that Allah, Azza wa Jal, be happy with them, on the day of judgment, then Allah Azza wa will be happy with that person who recites Salat upon me in abundance. So try and make a habit of reciting through the park. When we hear, you know, these blessings of reciting through the park, you probably hear them many, many times on Madri channel. And there'll, there'll be times where people will say, if you recite it in abundance, you know, what is abundance? How much is abundance? The pious scholars have said that if a person recites through the park 313 times minimum, then this will be classed as an abundance. And 313 signifies those people, those Muslims that were on the battlefield in the Battle of Badr. So 313 times if you recite the Park. And how long does that take? It doesn't take that long, does it? So please make a habit of reciting the Park. Before we introduce the topic today, we're going to give you the Talawat of the day. So let's, first and foremost, let's listen to the Talawat of the day. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Main Allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hoon Shaytani mardood se Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah ke naam se shuru Jo nihayat meherban rahim wala Wal-lazani ya'tiyaniha min اور تم میں جو مرد عورت ایسا کام کریں ان کو ایزا دو پھر اگر وہ توبہ کر لیں اور نیک ہو جائیں تو ان کا پیچھا چھوڑ دو بے شک اللہ بڑا توبہ قبول کرنے والا مہربان ہے وہ توبہ جس کا قبول کرنا اللہ نے اپنے فضل سے لازم کر لیا ہے وہ اڑھی کی ہے جو نادانی سے برائی کر بیٹھیں پھر تھوڑی دیر میں توبہ کر لیں ایسو پر اللہ اپنی رحمت سے رجوع کرتا ہے وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا اور اللہ علم و حکمت والا ہے وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْمَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ اور وہ توبہ ان کی نہیں جو گناہوں میں لگے رہتے ہیں حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنَ وَلَا الَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّاءُ یہاں تک کہ جب ان میں کسی کو موت آئے تو کہے اب میں نے توبہ کی اور نہ ان کی جو کافر مرے اولائک اعتدنا لہم عذابا علیما ان کے لیے ہم نے دردناک عذاب تیار کر رکھا ہے یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لا يحل لکم انترثوا النساء کرها اے ایمان والو تمہیں حلال نہیں کہ عورتوں کے وارث بن جاؤ زبردستی وَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ لِتَذْهَبُوا بِبَعْضِ مَا آتَيْتُمُوهُنَّ إِلَّا أَنْ 
یتین بفاحش تین اور عورتوں کو روکو نہیں اس نیت سے کہ جو مہر ان کو دیا تھا اس میں سے کچھ لے لو مگر اس صورت میں کہ سریح بے حیائی کا کام کریں بالمعروف فَإِن كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَا أَن تَكُرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجَعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا اور ان سے اچھا برتاؤ کرو پھر اگر وہ تمہیں پسند نہ آئیں تو قریب ہے کہ کوئی چیز تمہیں نہ پسند ہو اور اللہ اس میں بہت بھلائی رکھے وَإِن أَرَدْتُمُ اسْتِبْدَالَ زَوْجٍ مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ وَآتَيْتُمْ إِحْدَاهُنَّ قِنْطَارًا فَلَا تَأْخُذُوا مِنْهُ شَيْئًا اور اگر تم ایک بی بی کے بدلے دوسری بدلنا چاہو اور اسے ڈھیرو مال دے چکے ہو تو اس میں سے کچھ واپس نہ لو اَتَأْخُذُونَهُ بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا کیا اسے واپس لوگے جھوٹ بان کر اور کھلے گناہ سے وَكَيْفَ تَأْخُذُونَهُ وَقَدْ أَفْضَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا اور کیوں کر اسے واپس لوگے حالانکہ تم میں ایک دوسرے کے سامنے بے پردہ ہو لیا اور وہ تم سے گاڑا اہد لے چکی وَلَا تَنْكِحُوا مَا نَكَحَ آبَا اور باپ دادا کی منکوحہ سے نکاح نہ کرو مگر جو ہو گزرا وہ بے شک بے حیائی اور غزب کا کام ہے اور بہت بری راہ صدق اللہ العظیم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاءاللہ اندر گریٹ وی تو رائز ان شائن ہے اوبسلی لسننگ تو تلاوت اللہ قرآن نہ اونلی لسننگ تو تلاوت اللہ قرآن اف اونلی ون وی گیٹ اپ در امینی مینی پیپل الحمدللہ ون دے گیٹ اپ دے ہاف دے ناشتا دے بریکفست اور بیفور دے لیو ہوم تو گو تو ورک دے ریڈ اٹلیس ون پیج اور فیو پیجز اف قرآن اف اونلی وی کن میک دے ہابیٹ از ویل انشاء اللہ از ویل Before we go to the nath of the day, I've got a question for you all that you can ponder over whilst we listen to the kalam as well. What is the most valuable thing that you have? The thing that you value the most. What is that that you value the most? Is it, is it that car, that expensive car that you've saved up all your life to purchase? Is it that house? Is it that bungalow back home in Kashmir or somewhere or whatever? Is it that business? Is it your bank balance, what is it you value the most? What do you put the most value on? Or let's say if you were to lose it, if you were to lose the most valuable thing that you have got, it would affect you the most. What is it that thing that if you were to lose would affect you the most? Let's ponder over that. And whilst you're pondering over that question, inshallah, and we're going to discuss it, inshallah, after the nath, inshallah. So let's listen to the kalam, inshallah, and then we'll come back to this question. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa sallam alayka ya Habibullah Arish haq hai masnadeh رفعت رسول اللہ کی عرش حق ہے مسند رفعت رسول اللہ کی دیکھنی ہے حشر میں عزت رسول اللہ کی قبر میں لہرائیں گے تا حشر چشم نور کے
خبر مل گیرا گیتا حشر شش میں نور کے جلوہ فرما ہوگی جب تلعت رسول اللہ کی جلوہ فرما ہوگی جب تلعت رسول اللہ کی رسول اللہ کی پٹ پٹی ہے کونین میں نعمت رسول اللہ کی ہم بھی کاری وہ کری ان کا خدا عادت رسول اللہ کی سنو کہ لا نصب نے قریب سے نوری یہ فیض وجود کے دریا بہانے آئے ہیں اور نا کہنا نہیں عادت رسول اللہ کی الفت رسول اللہ کی جان کی ایک سیر ہے جان کی ایک سیر ہے جان کی ایک سیر ہے الفت رسول اللہ کی اور اہل سلطت رسول اللہ کی ٹوٹ جائے گے گناہداروں کے فوراں قید و بر حشر کو کھل جائے گی طاقت رسول اللہ کی حشر کو کھل جائے گی حشر کو کھل جائے گی طاقت رسول اللہ کی Don't go. 
जिसे कब का मुमकिन है पे मिदहत रसोल्ला की तुझसे कब मुमकिन है पे मिदहत रसोल्ला की अरश हक है मसनदे रिफात रसोल शिर में सत रसो सल्लू अल हबीब सल्ला मुहम्मद सल्लाम अल्लाह अकबर वर अन्न Beautiful way. And today we're talking about beautiful ways to wake up the blessing of Durud Park, the Talawat, and the Nath. But now we're going to get onto something a little bit more serious. We asked you a question. So, what is the most valuable thing that you have? That if you were to lose it, it would affect you the most. And maybe some people have said that you know, if I was to lose my gold, or if I was to lose my business, if I was to lose my uh, house. or lose my job or all of these things and maybe it would have affected me maybe some people might have even said that you know if i was to lose any of my family member then that would obviously affect me greatly and all of these things yes would affect you but did anybody say my iman if i was to lose my iman that would affect me the greatest did any of us ponder over the risk of losing our iman our family members we know that a time will come that you know we are told in the quran that every soul will taste death that sooner or later you know we will lose our family members and you are probably in a way mentally prepared for that day and you know that that will affect you the most and when we come on to worldly things like your business your house your job you know you're obviously concerned about them that if you were to lose them what would happen to me how would i survive without my job how would i survive without my house how would i be able to commute to work if i lost my car for argument's sake but did any of us did any of us say that you know out of all of those things the thing that would affect me the most is if i lose my iman iman is that treasure if you is of money child that if you lose it you know there's not much chance of you getting it back your business if it goes down then there's a chance that you can get your business back but if you lose any of your iman then what are the chances of getting it back are very very slim and we don't do anything to protect our iman you know when i came here to the studio outside i locked my car you know when we came into the studio as we were coming in we unlocked the door and then we came in we locked the door and when i left my home this morning i locked the door in the same way we we lock things we protect things we protect the things that we value we protect our cars our houses we we don't leave our money lying around we we safeguard it and we put it in a secure place if we have gold then we make sure that we put it in a safe place and we secure it but what about our iman what do we do to secure our faith what do we do to protect our faith do we even know those things that can affect our iman those things that can cause us to lose our iman those things that can cause us to have a bad end and when i mean by a bad end viewers of my channel a bad end for that person a person is cast as someone that has a bad end when he leaves this dunya he leaves this world and he loses his iman because in this dunya you hear for a small period of time but the akhirah is infinite and the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in once that you know he put his finger he said if you would put your finger in the ocean and the water that comes on your finger that is the dunya and the water that goes in the ocean that is the akhirah if you were to lose that ticket if you were to lose that visa for you to go to paradise then you are the greatest loser so we need to learn about those things that can affect us that can that can possibly cause us to lose our iman and today very very quickly we're going to talk about just some of those things that can cause you to lose your iman and ponder over it viewers of my channel i want you to seriously think about this that if any of these things are affecting you then before it's too late before it's too late you need to sort yourself out 
Because you know, obviously no, nobody wishes to die with that Iman. Nobody wants to die with the uh, Iman. And should we, we should be fearful of the fact that at that moment in time, at that time when death is approaching us, what is our state then? How have we lived our lives then? You know, what state are we in? How, what state are we going to die in? It is stated in a book in Shar al-Sudur that in that particular book it mentions four reasons. Four reasons for that could cause a person to die without Iman or to lose his Iman at that time. Because what could happen is at that time, just before death approaches you, you're in this agonies of pain. And at that time, you know, there are, there are many instances where we are told that Shaitan will appear to you in your form of your loved ones and try and convince you to leave the Iman. Because Shaitan is not going to give up yours of Malik Shaitan. Shaitan's task is to take your Iman away from you. And he's not going to say, oh, poor guy, he's, he's ill now, he's on his deathbed, I'll leave him. No, 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 no. <laughs> not even then. Not even then, Shaitan will be on your case. Shaitan is going to try. He's going to do everything at that crucial moment. He doesn't want to give up. And he will try anything to take your Iman away from you. Four things are mentioned in Shara Sudur. Number one, laziness in offering Salah. Number two, consuming alcohol. Number three, disobedience to parents. And number four, causing harm to Muslims. You know when you listen to them four, laziness in offering Salah, consuming alcohol, disobedience to parents, causing harm to Muslims. You start to think to yourself, how many people are there that safeguard themselves from just them four things? And when we mention other things as well, just them four things. Laziness in offering Salah. There are people that do not offer the Salah five times a day. There are people that do not give the importance to Salah. We find it hard to read our, read our Salah. I remember once meeting uh, a solicitor and we went to his office uh, to give him dawah to Nikki Kidawa to invite him to the ishtamas of Dawat Islami and to discuss things with him. And at the end of the sitting that we had with him, he said to me, brother, you know, it is a shaitanic whisper that I have, but a client can ring me and I can speak to the client for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and it doesn't bother me if he's taking longer, you know. When I, when, I pick, when I phone up a client, I think to myself, oh, this is going to take me 15 minutes. But if it takes 20, it takes 25, 30, 35, never mind. It's a client, isn't it? I know I don't mind that I spent an extra 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes on the phone to him. But when it comes to Salah, I think to myself, oh, no, I'm too busy. I haven't got five minutes. I'm too busy. I haven't got 10 minutes. Because in reality, that is all it takes. Five minutes, 10 minutes to read your Salah. And we find ourselves so busy that we haven't got time to read our Salah. Number two, consuming alcohol. You know, you're in that young age, you think, well, what's wrong if I drink a little bit of alcohol? Because I'm not going to get drunk, I'm going to make sure. But even drink, drinking one drop of alcohol, one drop of alcohol, and I will give you a wakia later on, one drop of alcohol that can cause you to lose your iman. Number three, disobedience to parents. And number four, causing harm to Muslims. If we look at them too, how many of us, how many of us have been disobedient to our parents? How many of us, have not given our parents the respect that is due. And we've been talking about that quite regularly on Mandari Channel, that we talk about respecting our parents and respecting our elders. But how many of us disrespect our parents? How many of us are disobedient to our parents? And you may think, well, you know, I have hurt my mom and my mom will get over it. Yeah, she'll be all right tomorrow. You know, I've annoyed my dad. Yeah, okay, my dad will be angry for me with a couple of days. He'll be upset with me for a couple of days, but he'll get over it and then he'll be all forgotten. Yeah. No, it won't be forgotten. It'll be written in that book of deeds. And on the day of judgment, that book of deeds will be opened up. And not only that, as a result of that disobedience, of a result of that disrespect that caused harm to your parents at that time, even before then, you may die without your iman. And fourth, causing harm to Muslims, you know, Causing harm to Muslims. What is causing harm to Muslims? Causing harm to Muslims can be caused with your tongue. Causing harm to Muslims can be caused with your hands. And nowadays people think they are clever. Yeah, they think they are clever that, you know, I've done someone over. For example, you know, you think you're cleverer than someone. You're wiser than someone. And as a result of your intellect, as a result of the, as they say in English, the, there's a, a saying, the gift of the gap, the gift to be able to speak. 
Yeah? The gift to be able to speak quickly, the gift to be able to think on, on your toes, the gift to be able to do these things that you've been able to be clever and overrun someone and, and bettered someone and you know, uh, done someone over in a deal or whatever it is. Yeah? And now you think to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm, you know you're, you're proud of yourself. You're proud of yourself that you've been able to you know, fiddle someone. You're proud of yourself that you've been able to do, cause this harm to someone and you've obviously you know, benefited from that harm and you think you're clever. You think that I've achieved something today and you do not care about the fact that you've harmed someone, that you've caused someone harm. If maybe you are a, a, you know, a responsible person and as a result of your authority, you think that you can dish out the orders and you can say to people to do things or do that things or you can insult people or say things to people. Why? Because you have this authority. Allahu Akbar, on the day of judgment that authority means nothing. What, may, what will affect you on the Day of Judgment was, did you affect the heart of that Muslim? Did you hurt that Muslim? Did you hurt his feeling? Did you upset him? Did you cause any harm to him? And if as a result of your words, as a result of your hands, you've caused harm to a Muslim in any shape or form, even harm to the fact that it's hurt them in the heart, that they feel upset in the heart, then you run the risk of losing your Iman. These are things, my viewers of Mother Shah, that we need to ponder over. We need to seriously ponder over these things and take these things seriously because today, like we said, you may be strong, you may be the ruler, you may have the authority, you may have the power, you may have everything. You may be able to get away with being disobedient to your parents. You may be able to get away with you, you know, missing your salah in the dunya. You may be able to get away with drinking alcohol in the dunya. You may be able to get away with hurting people's feelings and have no repercussions. And you may think to yourself, well, nothing's affecting me, I'm fine, look at me, I'm alright, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, yeah, I'm not reading my salah, but look at me, I'm okay. I have the occasional drink of alcohol, but look at me, I'm still healthy, I've not been affected by it, I make sure that I don't drink too much. Yeah, my parents, well, so what, yeah, what's affecting me, I'm okay. And if, I, if I, uh, I'm clever with him, if I can fiddle things out of him, if I hurt him, then so what? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I am me, what can you do about it? Maybe I can't. No, I can't do anything. I can't do anything in this dunya. And maybe nobody can do anything in this dunya. But every single thing you do will be written in that book. And every single thing you do will be opened on the Day of Judgment. And before that, before that, at that time of death, that time of death, Allahu Akbar. You know they say that at the time of death, that if you live your life in piety, then Insha'Allah, there is a chance that when you die, you know, you will feel, you'll feel comfort in the fact that you feel as if you're lying in the lap of your mother. But those people, the majority of us, the majority was unfortunate that not lived a life like that. What will happen is they said that the analogy is given that imagine that your body is being pulled through a bushes of thorns. That is the pain that you will feel. At that time, where is our intellect? At that time, how can we think straight? And at that time, you run the risk of losing your Iman. So please ponder over this. Please ponder over this. And now, inshallah, we're going to go to the daily reminder. And whilst you're going, whilst we're listening to this daily reminder, take the points of that, but also ponder over where are we heading? And are we doing anything to protect our Iman? So let's listen to the daily reminder sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah as muslims we live in this world which is referred to as alamul asbab the world of means the world of causes and we must take these means to survive. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. But at the same time, we must stay within the limits, the boundaries of Sharia. Because if we become overly involved in the world and its affairs, or if something like greed overpowers us, then there will be destruction. In this regard, I would like to mention an account that many Mufassireen, many commentators of the Qur'an have written and it's in regards to an individual who was known as Bal'am bin Ba'ura and he was someone who was an Abid, a Zahid, an ascetic worshipper who knew Al-Ismul A'zam 
the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by means of which when one supplicates the dua is accepted and it's mentioned that while sitting on the earth he could see the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well now it so happened that during his time Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam wanted to go to a particular land where he was situated Balam bin Baura and to take over to conquer that land because the people there were oppressive they were wrongdoers when those people found out they went to Balam bin Baura and they said look Musa alayhi salam is coming and he will remove us from this land he will take over so we are requesting that you do dua against him you supplicate against him that he is not successful in this mission of his Balam bin Baura replied and said how can I do so when he has believers amongst his army he has the angels alayhi salam as well and he is a prophet of Allah how can I even think of doing such a thing and they were insistent they kept saying look you need to do this please do this for us when eventually Balam bin Baura said look I will do istikhara I will seek uh, a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether this thing is good or not whether I should go ahead with it or not and after seeking istikhara as expected the result was you should not do so and if you were to do so you will be destroyed in this world and in the hereafter as well but again that qawm that nation which is the nation of Bani Israel they they were adamant they said look you have to do this first so eventually they bought mal mata wealth a lot of goods items expensive items and they placed it before him and said look if you do this for us then all of this is yours and this was the turning point Balam bin Baura he could not resist when he saw that wealth all those items luxuries and in the end he succumbed to their request and he was on his way to a particular mountain to supplicate against Musa Allah. the animal that he was riding on continued stopping and each time it stopped he would force the animal to go ahead eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned gave that animal the power to speak and the animal said what are you doing woe to you you are going to supplicate against a prophet of Allah each time you try to take me forward the angels stop me the angels change my direction because of the desire for goods of this world for wealth he was he only had one thing on his mind that I must go and do that when he reached that mountain and he began trying to supplicate against Musa salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that each time Balam bin Baura said something against Musa salam, it would go against himself and the people who had instructed him to do so and when they saw this they said what are you doing we are asking you to supplicate against Musa salam. you are supplicating against us and that's when he replied look I'm trying to do that but it's not working the opposite effect is taking place and thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed this individual such that his tongue which he used to try and supplicate against Musa salam, began hanging from his mouth and reached his chest and this stayed like this until he died his wilaya was removed any maqam or rank he had in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was also removed and taken away and this individual who just you know a few days before he was accepted in the court of Allah a waliullah he had lost everything and he died in a state of kufr disbelief so respected viewers what we must realize is the want and desire for more and greed especially this is something that we must always avoid great great people those who at one stage had great ranks they were destroyed because of greed they were destroyed because of wanting more than they required then what about us weak individuals we must work in this world to survive in this world for as long as we're going to live in this world we're not going to live here eternally and instead of falling prey to greed we should work and strive towards our hereafter 
which is our eternal abode. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Views of Madhuri Channel, you're watching, mashallah, Hafiz Kaleem Madhuri. Mashallah, he's a, a UK born person, mashallah, he was born here in the UK. And alhamdulillah, he's one of our Jamatul Madina graduates. And what is Jamatul Madina? Jamatul Madina is that uh, department, that uh, place where, alhamdulillah, we establish uh, effectively an Islamic university where we create the Islamic scholars of the future. And Hafiz Kaleem, I think he was from our first batch of students that graduated here in the UK. And at that time, I think we only had two jamias in Birmingham and in Bradford. Now, Alhamdulillah, we have nine jamias across the UK in various places in London, in the Midlands, Leicester, Birmingham, Rochdale, Blackburn, Bradford, Alhamdulillah, many, many places. And also two jamias for the sisters as well in Birmingham and in Bradford. And inshallah, another jamia for the sisters is due to open as well. So these are the establishments where Alhamdulillah, Dawud Salami, and I'm just mentioning UK here. Uh, these Jamiat al are established all around the world. There are Jamiat al in Canada, in America, in South Africa, in Pakistan, in India, many, many other places as well. And Alhamdulillah, these students that graduate from these Jamiat become the role models of the future. Here in the UK, we had one student that graduated and Alhamdulillah, he went to Canada. He did Hijrat to Canada and established the Jamiat al -Madina. The Mashallah Hafiz Kaleem Madani, he is one of our teachers in our Jamiat al and he's also responsible for doing some of the translation work some of the work that you see that you see in English may have been translated by Hafiz Kaleem Madani, mashallah. So the, this is some of, just one of the graduates of Dawud Islami from our Jamis here in the UK. But he also mentioned in the reminder that, you know, that this person died in a state of kufr, died in a state of unbelief, died in a state where he lost his iman. And that was what we were talking about today. And we give four very, very brief examples before the break about those things that can cause you to lose your Iman. But there are many others. There are many, many others that can cause you to lose your Iman. It is stated in a book called Minajul Abideen that Sayyidina Fuzal bin Ayyad, his students, one of his students was passing, was dying. And so he went to his student. And as he was uh, next to his student, he started to recite Surah Yasin. The, the teacher started to recite Surah Yasin. And the student, he said to his, his teacher, stop reciting Surah Yaseen. So the teacher, then what he did is he tried to recite the Kalama Sharif, reciting the Kalama, and tried to remind him to recite the Kalama there. Just before I go forward, at this point, I want to uh, say something, viewers, that if you are in that position where you are near someone, that it looks like they are close to death, don't tell them to read the Kalama. Don't tell them, remind them. And there's a big difference. If you're telling someone, read the kalma, read the kalma, read the kalma, they're in it. They could be in all sorts of pain. Yeah? And they might just say, oh, you know, you know, it's like when, you, when you're in pain, you don't want to listen to anybody. You don't want to listen to anybody telling you to do anything. Yeah? What you want is want people to comfort you at that time. So rather than telling someone to recite the kalma, at that time, remind them. And remind them by just reciting the kalma yourself. So if you're reciting the kalma, then that person is listening and that reminds him that he should also recite it as well. So do not tell the person to recite it. Anyway, coming back to the incident. Sayyidina Fuzal bin Ayyad, he started to remind his student to recite the kalma. And his student said to him that I have nothing to do to stop reciting. I shall never recite the kalma. I have nothing to do with that. And with that words, he passed away. Now, obviously, this teacher was distraught with this. That this teacher, this student of his, he, he was a good student. He held a high status. How is it that this student of mine died in this state where he didn't want to listen to Surah Yasin? He didn't want anything to do with the Kalma, and he refused to do it, and he died in this state. And it says that for 40 days, Sayyidina Fadal bin Ayyad, he, he wept, he cried, he was in anguish. And after 40 days, he saw him in a dream. And in that dream, he was being dragged into the hellfire by the angels. And he said to his student that, you know, why, why have you been deprived of your mystical knowledge? You were such a great status, you were such a great student in this world. Why? What has happened? And the student replied, it was because of three bad habits. Listen to this. Number one, telling tales. I used to tell one thing to my friends, but I used to say something else to you. 
The second is jealousy. I was jealous of my friends. And the third is drinking alcohol. But he went on to say, on the advice of my doctor, I used to drink a glass of alcohol every year to be cured of a disease. Just one glass of alcohol every year to be cured of a disease. Allah Akbar. This student, you know, that was on the path of knowledge, even then shaitan does not give up. And he used to tell tales. He used to be jealous and he used to drink one glass of alcohol. And as a result of that, as a result of them actions, it is said that he lost his Iman. Allah Akbar. You know, do we even care about telling tales? You know, we, we think it is good to be able to know something so that we can go and tell other people about it. We tell tales to people. And we, we cannot sit in a gathering where backbiting doesn't take place. We can't sit in a gathering in which we tell tales or we joke or we swear or we do all these things. And, you know, the amount of sins that we can gather when we are sitting in these gatherings. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that those who backbite, taunt others, tell tales and find fault with innocent people will be resurrected on the day of judgment by Allah Azza wa Jal in the form of dogs. In another hadith it said that a person who tells tales will never enter paradise. Full stop! Telling tales, you won't enter paradise. But how many of us do that? How many of us don't have any concern about that? And when, you know, we saw the hadith that were, we're backbiting, we're taunting, we're joking. You know, when we sit in a gathering, you know, we, we have to find something to say. And then what will happen is, is we'll have a story. And it might be a simple thing that, you know, or uh, Brother Harad dropped his, his glass on the floor. But when he dropped his glass, and then someone will say, oh yeah, but when he dropped his glasses on the floor, he fell over and he banged his head and there was food, blood coming everywhere and it made such a mess. And, and we exaggerate the stories as well. Again, what, why? Why so that, oh, we get a few laughs. Or oh, people say, oh yeah, he's a good storyteller, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, look at the stories. He comes up with all these stories. How does he do it? I don't know how he does it. Wow, what a guy. Yeah, oh, what a guy. And then, unfortunately, when our sisters sit together, or even our brothers sit together, I'm not going to just say the sisters do it, but gossiping and saying and, you know, backbiting and saying, oh, you know, the sisters might say, you know, see that, that sister, the clothes that she's wearing, oh, you know, that, that and then clothes went out in fashion, went out to fashion five years ago. I don't know why she's wearing them clothes now. Oh, maybe she's stingy, she's got money, she doesn't spend it on these things. Oh, have you seen the way that she does her makeup? I don't know what she's doing, I don't know. She can't cook properly, she sent some food to my house the other day. Oh, it had too much salt in it, had too much chili in it. Oh, it wasn't cooked properly, it was, it was raw, it was burnt. It was all of these things that we'll say. And then brothers will sit with each other and say, oh, have you seen the car that he's driving? Look at that car, I'd never drive that car. I've seen better cars than that in the scrapyard, yeah? Have you seen him? The clothes that he's wearing, you know, they, there's no, the, he wears them and they've got creases on them and he doesn't wear tidy clothes and he wears dirty clothes and he doesn't look after himself and look how unhealthy he is, he is look how unfit he is, look at all the rubbish food that he And these are all of the things that you'd, why? Why? What have you achieved? What have you achieved by saying all these things? Yeah, you got a few laughs. Yeah. You made people happy in the gathering that you sat there. But just think of what you've done to that person. Just think of the sins that you've been accumulated. Yeah. Just imagine that you sat there and literally every word that you're speaking, a, a, a sin is falling onto that scale. Your good deeds, your good deeds here, your sins here, gradually what's happening is you're doing this. Yeah. You're putting more and more onto the scale. Why? Do you want to run the risk of losing your Iman at that time? And this is what we need to be careful about. You know, the, the pious people of the past, they would be very, very careful about the words that they would use. The Prophet of Allah has said, Good news is for that person who refrains from excessive talking and spends what is excess in his wealth. We don't know how to control it. We don't know how to control it. There was a companion, he said that, he said once that, you know, sometimes a person used to say something to me and I would like to reply to him. He said, I would like to reply to him to such an extent that if a person feels thirsty and they like cold water, it's that, that thirst that I have inside me to reply. But I would avoid replying because I was scared of useless talking. Scared of useless talking. And nowadays, what, what fear do we have? We talk all day, do we think about how we're controlling our tongue? I remember once, and I think I've mentioned this before, I remember once I met a doctor, he was a homeopathic doctor, 
and he said to me that he went to visit his friend in the hospital and when he visited his friend in the hospital they were in an open ward as you know you have these open wards where they have and this ward was for those people that had just had stomach operations or were due to have stomach operations and uh, he went to visit his friend and I think his friend had just had his operation and he was recovering and he was talking to him but as he came out he, as, at the end of the ward there were some doctor's offices and he, he went into one of the offices and said can I speak to the doctor here and he said yeah and he said look uh, I'm a homeopathic doctor and you know I've come across a lot of different different illnesses and I believe that in this ward all the people that are here today are here because of some sort of stomach related illness but in my uh, uh, expertise, in my experience, I've never come across the effects that I've seen in someone in your ward, that how an illness in the stomach can affect this. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, where my friend is, in the bed next to him, there is a person there that speaks like this, one word at a time and the doctor smiled and the doctor said to him look this is nothing to relate to you know be related to a stomach illness whatsoever it's just that when that person came in he was speaking like that we asked him and he said to me that before he speaks each and every word he ponders and he pauses and he thinks do I need to speak this word and he's so scared of useless talk he's so scared of saying something that will cause him to accumulate sins. Now, I'm not saying that we should all speak like that. It would be very hard. And if I was to speak like this on Mother Nishan now, then within a few minutes you would get bored and you would stop listening to everything I'm saying. But at the same time, we need to be very careful of what we are saying and how we control our tongue. But unfortunately, we don't do this and we need to be very careful of this. Next, the next thing that we mentioned that Sayyidina Fazal bin Yazi's student mentioned was the fact that you know, uh, jealousy, the jealousy of, of, uh, of, because of being jealous of someone, that he ran the risk of losing his Iman. Now, what is jealousy? Jealousy, my viewers of Mother Channel, is where you want something that someone else has got to be given to you. Yeah, it is stated that the one who is, is jealousy is called a hasad, whereas the one whom someone is jealous is called a masul, stated, is the definition extracted from a book. So the meaning is, the definition shows that if a person has a desire for the loss of any other person's bounty and for having that same bounty for himself, then this desire of his is jealousy. That not only do you want to have, you know, uh, you know, a PC tablet like mine, but what you want is, is you want this brother that you're watching on the channel like to lose this PC tablet and I want this PC tablet. I want him to lose it. I want him to drop it and I want me to find it. I want his business to go down and I want me to take over. I want, I want to take over these things. I want him to lose this. This is jealousy. Rather than being, you seeing someone that's got a nice car and say, mashallah, you know, mashallah, that brother's worked very, very hard yeah, to get that car. Uh, instead, what you're saying, you know what? I need to do something. I, I just hope uh, something happens that he loses that car and I have that car or he loses that business and I have that business and you know we have people that nowadays that you know when people are running a business you may be running a, a business and let's look for examples here in the UK you're running a, a takeaway business you're running a, a restaurant you're running a, a, a clothes business or, a, or whatever it is and the business starts to go down and you know that that business is going down not only that you're a friend of that person you're a friend of that person and he might even be a relative, it could even be the fact that it could be a relative of yours, it could be a cousin of yours, it could even be a brother of yours whose business is going down, but what do you do? Nothing. You think to yourself, you know what? He doesn't know how to run a business. I know how to run that business. You know, if you did this, if you did this, you did this, and you're thinking to yourself, that business would be successful. And the reason why it's not successful is because that person is not running it properly. The reason why it's not successful is he doesn't know how to run his business. You know what? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait until the business drops and it collapses and he becomes in debt and he can't run it anymore. And then what I'll do is I'll buy it for next to nothing. I'll buy it for next to nothing. I'll take that business off him, yeah? And I'll make that business a success. Allahu Akbar. If only, if only you could go to that brother that relative of yours, or even if it's not a relative of yours, a friend of yours, even if it's not someone that you know, you go to them and say, look brother, 
you know, Alhamdulillah, I can see that, you know, you're struggling, yeah, the business is going down a bit. Have you tried this? Have you tried online selling? Have you tried a bit more advertising? Have you tried, you know, marketing your goods differently? Have you tried putting it this way? Have you tried doing it this way? Have you tried, you know, if you've got a food, have you tried deliveries? Have you tried special offers? Or whatever it is that you've come up with, why don't you share them ideas? Why don't you share them ideas with them so that hopefully that, that person can be successful? But what we do is, is rather than do this, we wait for this person to collapse. We wait for his business to fall. Views of Mother Channel, I've got a, a beautiful parable with regards to this, of regards to how a person in the streets of Medina reacted. That when someone came into his shop and wanted to buy some stock of him, how did he react and how did he show his love and affection for his fellow Muslim brother? But before that, I want you to listen to the daily hadith of the day, inshallah. So please stay tuned, and inshallah, Allah after the daily hadith, I'll give you a parable from the streets of Medina. Sallu alil Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu alil Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, inshallah, in today's daily hadith, I will be sharing a hadith in regards to a beautiful sunnah. Narrated on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said Law la an ashukka ala ummati la amartuhum bis siwaki in the kulli salam The Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said Had I not found it difficult upon my ummah I would have instructed, I would have commanded them that they use the miswak for every salah Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, from this hadith we can understand how much importance and emphasis has been made upon using the miswak. Alongside there being many uh, hygienical and medical benefits of using the miswak, the greatest virtue of using the miswak, of course, is that it is the sunnah of Rasulullah and it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the miswak, it pleases the Rahman and it displeases the shaitan. Using the miswak, it graces an individual with the presence, with the company of the angels. And through using the miswak, one is able to elevate his status in Jannah. Also, the miswak aids a person in the pangs of death. And the salah which is performed after using the miswak, its reward is also multiplied by 70. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, why don't you also make the intention to use the miswak? Now, how do we use the miswak? When do we use the miswak? To learn about all these manners and many other madri pearls in regards to miswak, I encourage you to uh, read the booklet of, written by Sheikh Tariqat Amir Ahl Sunnat, Damat Barakat Mul'aliya, entitled Blessings of Miswak, uh, which can be purchased uh, at your nearest Maktabatul Madina or alternatively, you can download it on the website of Dawat Islami. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the privilege of being able to make use of this beautiful miswaq and ultimately act upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before the break, we were talking about jealousy. We were talking about the fact that, you know, uh, you, someone has a business and the business is collapsing, the business is falling, and you will look at ways to take over that business. You look at ways to benefit from someone's loss rather than helping someone. And it is stated that, you know, there was a time on the streets of Medina that someone went into a cloth shop and when this person went into the cloth shop he said to him that you know I want to buy a certain amount of cloth to give away in Sadhka to give away to people however I want this type of cloth I want this amount of cloth and I want to purchase it for no more than this amount of money so the shopkeeper said, yeah, I have that cloth. I have it in the quantity that you want as well. I have it in the quality that you want as well. And yes, I can do it for that price that you wish. However, my dear brother, there is also a cloth shop across the road from me. 
I've been watching him all day. And I've realized that he's had no customers. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, I've had customers today. I've had people that have come into my shop today. He's not had any customers. I would appreciate it if you went and bought the material from him instead. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How many of us would do that? You know, if someone comes into our shop, we're selling mobile phones and they look at the mobile phone and say, yeah, okay, fair enough, yeah, it's okay, yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just go down the road, there's a few shops down there, I'll have a look there, uh, and if I don't see anything that I like there, I'll come back and I'll have this phone. When people say that in our shop, what do we do? No, 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 don't go down there. Nah, 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 nah. His phones, are, people have told me that his phones, you know, after two days they start working. People have told me that, you know, he's selling stolen phones. People are telling me that he's selling locked phones. People are telling me that, oh, they're not right, then phones. No, no, no. Also, he's very, very expensive. You don't want to go to him. He's a bit dodgy as well. You know, oh, you know what he does with his money? Oh, this, this shop of his, yeah, he uses that shop to, you know, clean his dirty money. He's, he's a money laundering through that shop. Oh, don't go to him. You don't want to be part of that, do you? Oh, no, brother. You don't want to commit the sin of buying from someone that's money laundering, do you? You don't want to do these things. And every word that you have spoken, you've committed sins. Slandered that brother. Backbited that brother. Yeah. Said all these things about him. What have you achieved? A few pennies. What have you achieved? You've achieved a few pennies by selling that mobile phone to him. I'll tell you what you've achieved. You've achieved a whole bundle of sins. A whole bundle of sins that if these sins weighed a certain amount of weight, you would not be able to carry these sins. And is this how we've done that? By a res as a result of that, that this is what you said to these people? That you said to this person that, you know, don't go here, don't go there. Now, I'm not saying to you that in the same way that that person on the streets of Medina yeah, sent his customers to another shop. You know, that's, you know, you could say that that's next level. But at the same time, at least do not become jealous, do not have a hasad, do not you know, backbite, do not slander other people just to earn a few pennies. And you know what also we do is we think negative of people as well. If a person is doing successful, if he's driving a nice car, you know, for example, that person, you know, people say, oh, he's money laundering through that shop. Why? Because he's driving a nice car. So he must be using that shop to money launder. What have you benefited in saying that? What have you achieved? in thinking negative about someone? What have you achieved of putting this slander on him that he's money laundering this, he's, he's, a, he's a drug dealer and, and as a result of that he's money laundering to, through that shop or he's a drug dealer and he's bought that car. What have you achieved? It was beautiful, I remember Negran Shura and Amila Sunnah saying, and they said it many, many times, that thinking ill of someone, right, there is no benefit in it. Only it damages you. Yeah? The only thing you will achieve is sins when you think negative of someone that, oh, he's a drug dealer, oh, he's this, he's that, he's that, or whatever it is. But if you think positive about someone, there's no loss in it. There's no loss in it. And so we should think positive about people. If a person seems to be driving or seems to be affluent, seems to be doing well, mashallah, I pray that if he's earned it through halal income, may Allah Azza wa give him more. May Allah Azza wa make him successful. May Allah Azza wa give him the ability to spend that wealth in the way of Allah Azza wa May Allah Azza wa give him the ability to use that wealth to look after his family and his relatives, alhamdulillah. Do a dua for him, rather than saying, you know what, I know he's got that money. You don't know, I know he's got that money. He's up to no good, he's up to something dodgy. If you are 100% sure, 100% sure that okay, you can tell people to avoid this person because he's a known criminal or he's a known this, that, but in the majority of cases, you just assume. Don't make assumptions. By making these assumptions, all you're doing is you, you know, just imagine that if a sin, each sin was to, you know, weigh one kilo. Each sin was to weigh one kilo. Think at the end of the day one, how many kilos you would have to carry. You'd not be able to stand up. You'd be lying on your, on, your, on your back, you'd be lying there and the air would be just crushing you. And every sin one kilo. And that's just one day. How many sins do we accumulate in weeks? How many sins do we accumulate in months? We still accumulate these sins. So we need to change, we need to reflect. Before we talk about the next, well, there's a few more things that can cause you to lose your Iman. We're going to take a small break, inshaAllah, and we're going to have a kalam, inshaAllah, just to refresh you, inshaAllah, and I'm hoping that the kalam is going to talk about Medina, the streets of Medina, 
and visiting Medina, inshaAllah. So please stay tuned to us. Let's listen to the Kalam, inshaAllah. But remember, please stay with us. Inshallah, when we get back, we're going to talk about more things that can affect us, that can cause us to lose our Imam, which is a very, very, very important topic for us. Salu alayl Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. का आसरा है मदीना हुजूर का जब से कदम पड़े हैं रिसालत मुआब के जन्नत बना हुआ है मदीना हुजूर का फिर जा रहे हैं अहले मोहब्बत के काफले फिर याद आ रहा है मदीना हुजूर का आई फिर याद आई फिर याद मदीने की रुलाने के लिए दिल मुजमहिल जाता काश गुम्बदे खजरा देखने को मिल जाता हिल जाता मदीना याद
बाद आया है मदीना याद आया है फिराक मदीना में दिल गम जदा है जिगर टुकड़े टुकड़े हुआ जा रहा है रहूं बस इसी गम में बेचैन सरवर मुकादर ने जो दाग फुरकत दिया है मेरे दिल के अरमा मेरे दिल को तड़पा रहा है बस मेरा दिल मुजतर मदीने में छोर बात होती कभी लौट कर न आता तो कुछ और बात होती मैं मदीने तो गया था ये बड़ा शर्फ था ले वही दम जो टूट जाता तो कुछ और बात होती मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है बड़ी उम्मीद है सरकार कदमों जब नजर होगी मदीने हम भी जाएंगे अगर जाना मदीने को हाले दिल सुनाएंगे मदीना याद आया मदीना याद आया है घर खुशी चाहिए तो मदीने चलो जिंदगी चाहिए तो मदीने चलो सारी मस्ती मदीने 
की गलियों में गए सारी मस्ती मदीने की गलियों में गए कैफ सारे का सारा मदीने में है दिल पे सदके किया तस्किन पाए तो पाए कहारूह तस्किन पाए तो पाए कहाँ किस तरह दूर रह कर जिए हम यहाँ किस तरह दूर रह कर जिए हम यहाँ जब के सब कुछ हमारा मदीने में है मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है सलू अल हबीब सल्लल्लाहु सल्ला मुहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम Mashallah, you know we're gonna have a brother Amiru Din by Mashallah is with us. Amiru Din by, we're talking of obviously about the causes of a bad end, the fact that you can, you know, those things that can lo lose your iman. And Alhamdulillah, you know that I'm listening to the tradition booklets on that. And you know, I don't know if you can remember any wakias from that book or any incidents from that book or any parables from that book that talks about, you know, those sort of things that can cause you to lose your iman that you can share with us today. When you look at the causes of bad death, right? Uh, to me, the the foremost thing obviously is Akida and uh, now, now even if your Akida is tr true like many people obviously they don't realize this that if we ignore what Allah Azawajal has commanded us to do like the Farais like even not performing Salah that to me is, is a very big situation and that causes people to obviously die without Iman because you find many people and now we're saying this is the moment for us not only to perform salah like many of us we perform salah but we don't know the basic for us the knowledge that is essential for us to and to at least to make sure that our namaz is accepted right like one, one like very basic thing many people and when you go on kafir we see this people who are five time namazis they don't know the basics about ghusl and you won't be you, you won't believe it. there are people that we we took to kafila when you talk about three furs of gusal they they are shocked they say they think like fur is gusal as well they thought we only thought that gusal and lifting is only in salah is there fur is in gusal now imagine if you don't know the basic and even if you're performing salah five times a day now isn't it the best opportunity now go on to the uh, uh, dawah website and seek knowledge and this comes free of charge from Daud Islam. And even things like many people don't know the basics of of, of wuzu. And then even reading Quran. Now there's online causes to teach people tajweed. How many people make mistakes? So now if your namaz is not accepted, how can you even be confident about dying with iman? Now there's something that, that comes to my mind always. One is an advice. We mention, and this is something very common that we must share, that if a person does not respect the adhan, there's a danger that he can die without iman. Yes. And that can be a cause of a bad death. Imagine things like, now how many people know th this kind of uh, information, that they're disrespecting the call of prayer. Now, some people, now if you sit and think and you reflect, what is so bad about, uh, about disrespecting adhan? The first thing is, if you understand what the azan, what message this is, this is giving out, one is it's reminding you that there's no one greater than Allah. So the muazzin is doing you a big favor. You got a problem, and you and you hear the azan saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, straight away. It tells you know what I have a problem, but the problem with the problem is Allahu Akbar. Allah can solve the problem. He is the greatest. So is you're going to the one that can solve your problem. And what a beautiful thing is when you're in, in Salah, 
They said the closest you'll come to Almighty Allah is in the position of sujood, taking sajda. So if you are attuned to a religious way of life, you'll find automatically you'll go to Allah. And you find, you know, they say these days the people who are earning the, the largest amount of money are psychiatrists and psychologists. So, but if you are obviously aware that have tawakkal on Almighty Allah, then you don't need to go to any psychiatrist or any psychologist. So, you know, anything and everything is from the will of Allah. And Almighty Allah will not burden a soul more than it can bear. So again, we come back to the same thing. People do not understand what a great favor it is that we have the ability of listening to the Adhan. In South Africa, Alhamdulillah, there is no restriction. We can give Adhan, adhan in the loudspeaker. So Mashallah. imagine now how many people you'll find. Not only ignore the Adhan, they have music blasting, etc., etc. So this is also another cause of a bad death. Without doubt. Today without is doubt. like without a message respect. that we should pay attention to these kind of things. Amir al-Din Bhai, Jazakallah for giving us your time, inshaAllah Azawajal. May Allah Azawajal reward you and may Allah Azawajal keep them always happy. Inshallah, now we're going to go to the package that we got that explains just one of the apps of Dal Islami and I hope that everybody downloads this app. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Traveling abroad or within the country or passing through a desert or a mountainous area. Doesn't matter, Salah is farz, compulsory. Oh Allah, oh Allah. All you need is a GPS enabled smartphone and an internet service available. Prayer times. Dawood Islami IT department has developed an ideal mobile application which shows you Qibla direction, sunrise, sunset and salah, timing of that particular location and much more. Let me show you how it works. Allah, show me the right path, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, show me the right path, oh Allah, Allah, show me the right path, oh Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a, like I said, it's an app that I have on my phone and everybody has on their phone and should have on their phone. And basically, uh, wherever you are, you can basically say that I've moved to this location. So even here in the UK that I'm in, in Bury at the moment, whenever we go to a different city, we travel to a different place. As soon as we get there, we say that we're in this new location. It automatically comes up with the GPS of where you are. It'll tell you which street you are on. It'll tell you what number that you are on. It'll tell you the, even the address that you are. And, you know, straight away, it can update your times. And not only that, it can also, once it's updated the times, you can also check the times for the full month as well. So you can come onto the monthly service. You can go through all annual times. You can set, manually set the location of where you are. So you can say, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be going to Pakistan now. So in Pakistan, what time is Fajr there? What time is Maghrib there? Oh, okay, okay. And then you can set it there manually, but obviously when you get there, you can set the exact location as well. So many benefits as well. The other thing that you can do as well is, is you can actually set the azan to go off at the start of every salah. So now we're in our busy lifestyle and mashallah, Amir al from South Africa, he was told that, you know, we can hear the azan over there. But here in the UK, we're not as fortunate. We're not lucky that we can hear the azan five times a day. But you can, you can hear the azan five times a day. Set it on there. Basically, all it is, is it's like setting the alarm that you just set the azan on all of them. So as soon as the time for salah happens, you hear the azan straight away. So again, constant reminders. In there, it also has a Qibla direction where you can set the Qibla direction. If you have a problem looking at which direction the Qibla is, you know, use that inshallah and use that. And there are many other things within that app. So it's a very important app that we need to have download with us. Views of the channel, we've been talking today about those particular acts that can lose your Iman. And Amiruddin rightfully mentioned that Salah is one of those things. And we mentioned that at the right at the beginning. 
the salah is one of the things that can cause you to lose your iman. But there are many, many other things, and we mentioned quite a few today. Just one more I wish to mention uh, to you, and this is probably more for uh, our affluent brothers and sisters that are reasonably wealthy in particular. We are told that, you know, if hajj becomes furs upon you, and you do not perform the hajj that is furs upon you, uh, then you run the risk of losing your iman. And there are many, many people that are probably watching me today that are financially capable of performing the hajj, but they keep on delaying it. Oh, I'll just get my children through education. Oh, I'll just get my daughter married. Oh, I'll just finish off that kitchen extension. Oh, I'll just finish off buying up that car. I need to buy that car. Oh, I want to finish building that house in Pakistan. Oh, I need to buy a little bit more land. Oh, I need to... And we come up with a thousand and one excuses. Yeah. And whilst you're making them excuses, if the angel of death visits you, what use is that kitchen extension going to be? What use is it, the fact that you've finally built that house back home? What use is it that you finally bought the car that you wanted? What use of it is that you've achieved all these other things in the world? Yeah, so viewers of Mother Nishan, please, I humbly request all of you to please make an intention. If Hajj is furs upon you, if Hajj is furs upon you, then make a sincere intention right now that as soon as the first opportunity arises, I will go and perform the Hajj. And you know, once you've gone and done that, you'll feel a burden of you, you'll feel a weight of you, you'll feel yourself spiritually uplifted, but you'll also feel that this Faraz that is upon you has now been lifted and you can live a life of ease. So please, viewers of Mother Channel, please do things, reflect and do all these things to protect your Iman. Today we've been talking about the causes of a bad end. Amiruddin mentioned that there are many, many booklets uh, that are available to download. And one of the booklets that you can download is Causes of a Bad End. And many of the booklets are available to download these books, read these books. So viewers of Mother Channel, learn to protect the most valuable thing that you have. There are many, many locks that you can put on to protect your Iman, your five daily prayers, reading the Quran, attaching yourself to an environment like Dawud Islami. And I could talk all day about all those things that can protect your Iman, but time is against us. So please, viewers of Mandani Channel, keep watching Mandani Channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine